I am not shy about peeling the labels off if they cover up the marks because how am I supposed to know whether I can buy it or not? Wow, well this is a busy place. It is the Goodwill, and it's a good Goodwill. And the reason I know that is because I came to this Goodwill in Colorado Springs to meet my friend Yvonne from Yvonne Thrifty Rich here on YouTube. It's the first time I've been traveling through here in, gosh, I think about 18 months, and she is on her way to meet me. I'm very excited. Look who I'm with. Hi, Yay. Hi it's a hot one but it's still beautiful we are at the first goodwill just like last time we're going to make the strip down academy so you know nobody gets lost or anything and we can really power shop this is the one you guys with the loud music okay but i've warned them because there's always something good in here anyways yeah and we're going to just sing really loud over it and <laughs> um and i know uh, and i'm kind of cheating because i unfortunately can't stay for when the big group from uh, the midwest comes they're coming in two days so our goal today is to buy everything good before they get here right <laughs> <laughs> no seriously we're gonna meet um, Sarah and David at four o'clock at my my booth the antique mall that's, that's right be our last stop and there's so much good stuff here we won't be able to buy everything before <laughs> they get here okay so Yvonne has the cart and we are rolling but first I want to show you this 1980s furniture a lot of this was made in Italy it's very heavy but if the drawers work smoothly like they seem to do it's only 49.99 and this stuff is starting to make a comeback this is 80s furniture i like it i sell this in florida and if i had it in florida i would expect to get about three to four times what they have it priced at so it would be worth buying but i'm not going to drag it there from colorado because we're tall we like to look at the tops of all of these rounders first and then we'll get into all of this we're going to start with prince and lamps that's attractive looking. Yvonne says she's been selling lamps pretty well in her uh, mall spaces. Thanks, Jocelyn. <laughs> yes, yes, Jocelyn got us going on the crazy lamps. There's a nice old one with the floral applied. That's an elderly one right there from the 50s. This is a nice flat top. $129.99 is kind of full price, but these are good because they turn into tables and storage both. So they're a better seller than the dome trunks. This is a bunch of drip glaze. This is probably by Hull, yes. When you see the oven proof and the curly S like that, this is Hull pottery. This is very popular in the late 50s through the 70s. And there are people who collect it, but their prices are enough that I don't see margin on that. Green is 30%, yellow is 50%, and then purple is the expiring sale. Got it. Now this is Phoenix Bird. This came out in the 1930s originally, and there are collectors. And you can tell after the war, it doesn't have as many impurities in the back. So this is a post-war version. And this one, they have $2.99 on. That's actually a pretty good price for a ginger jar. And who knows, maybe I need that. I am not shy about peeling the labels off if they cover up the marks, because how am I supposed to know whether I can buy it or not? Well, there you go. It says sterling weighted under that label, and it's $1.99, so that's definitely a purchase for me. Hooray! It's just fun being somewhere where things like silver actually come through to the floor. Once a king, always a king, but once a knight is enough. Yes, 1970s humor. Oh, she's cute. Japanese, yeah, yeah, this looks like... 30s or 50s? Cheap enough. 30s, yeah, cheap enough. There's nothing wrong with her, but you're right. It's so similar to a lot of things I'm not selling well right now. Interesting, yeah, Yvonne was just saying it's what everyone else in her mall sells, and so she's not getting it for that reason, and that makes a lot of sense. You don't want to necessarily copy what everyone else around you is doing. Here's something from Seattle that has made its way to Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs is a great place to shop in part because a lot of people come here through the military, which means they come and go and they change things around and they leave things behind and they've been in other interesting places around the world. This is only $2.99, I guess I should get it. And the Sequoia Alphabet, the Cherokee Alphabet, this is really cool. This is Francoma. But they want $14.99 because this is something people around here recognize and collect. That would be my price on it. And there's Utah, where I just was yesterday. You don't buy something if you don't like it because you know it'll just sit at home. And it'll be the last thing I list and since I'm a thrift store junkie, I'm always buying more stuff. So, so I try to stay in my lane, you know, what people kind of expect, that 70s stuff. Um, with 
like clean lines and I will do Art Deco because it blends well. Art Deco and Art Nouveau, I feel like blend well. They go with everything. Yeah, and then also, plus Art Deco, it's not a, like, it just had a birthday. It's antique now. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it is selling. It's yeah. it's actually doing a lot better than it has lately, I think, so. It's hard to find, quite frankly, in the thrift stores. Yeah, that's right, yeah. absolutely. A way to start a death pile is buy a bunch of stuff you really don't care about because it'll end up at the bottom and then you have the base to put all your other stuff on that you're never going to sell. They are bringing the carts out and we are watching them unpack. I see a piece of Lennox in there. Not that I need it, but that wheat base down there is Lennox. The bed base. Mm -hmm. And he took out something that said Big Sky and I've noticed in Florida I have uh, some customers for Big Sky so I'm kind of curious what that was. But this is a good time. We just ran into a very nice viewer here who told us all about what time to come for when they unload the carts here and at another thrift store. And uh, she and her husband were great fun. But they agreed that when they saw the carts coming out, it was time to stop talking and start shopping. So we are back to shopping. Little folk art piece here. This could be Czech. No, Bulgarian. 1995. Not real old. Now, Yvonne's smart because she looks at a lot of things that are definitely reseller friendly, like fragrances and cosmetics and things, and there is definitely good money to be made in those and definitely worth looking at. I usually look more for discontinued things because I'm trying to mainly do vintage, but there are a lot of good options. Delf Blue soap dispenser. This Goodwill still has furniture too. It's nice to be at one that carries everything because we are seeing some of the Goodwills are choosing not to carry furniture anymore and some of them don't carry jewelry anymore and there are certain categories that are disappearing that take some of the fun out of it to me. They also have a big book section here. <laughs> it's funny, Yvonne said this is just plastic but there's one plastic thing here I really like that I want to show you. Yeah this is it is vintage. They came out with these in the 70s and 80s and they usually say Ingrid. They were made in Chicago, but I think it's a Swedish design. And if you open it up, you will get a surprise. So you pop this up and when you open the top here, it is the best design picnic set because this turns into a bowl. You've got all your little cups and things. You've got all your serving trays. And then here's a bunch of plates and the whole thing for your picnic there's bowls, it all stores with these cute primary colors into this neat little thing. I've sold these for as much as $30 before and this one is $8. I have one currently, but I'm tempted to get this one too, because that's a good price. I wasn't even gonna go down that aisle. False graph with the speckles here. It's a heavy thing to ship, but there is your mark, False Graph USA, $4.99. And let's see what she's found there. She's smart, she brings her readers. I have not learned to use mine like I should. Something Azul, always Azul Pottery. Oh, that's a name. My viewers taught me. Let's put it in the cart and I'm gonna look that up because that's a name. They taught it to me on bowls and mugs. Interesting, yeah, I have not seen this mark before so I'm curious about it too. And look how pretty the glaze is. And chili peppers, and we're in the right place for chili peppers. So thanks y'all for teaching me about that name. Yeah, and I think I just learned something too. This is great. I don't see anything really old in shot glasses here. I always look at the beer related items because sometimes you find something that dates back or is a company that doesn't <laughs> produce anymore. Or you find something like this back when they were the San Diego Chargers. I would probably put those on here. Yvonne is giving her channel some primers on cups and I have learned to buy cups because of she and Jocelyn, a crazy lamp lady. And what she was talking about is that if she had to buy any today, she looked at the Chicago from Starbucks, but she also thought these because they have the Odagiri look from the late 70s, early 80s, and there's a set of four and having a set of four, well that's a good thought. So I will have to bear that in mind, look for sets. You collect this? Everything. Oh, this is awesome. That's your color too? Yeah. Well, I collect huh. all the colors. Oh, the colors but, are know, so the great. Blue and red, it's, you know, yeah. And the purple, I love like like Oh, the purple is great. No, no, you should take them all. No, you know they sell. They, I know they sell, but you should have them. I've got plenty of glass and those are great. The tumbler, that's what sells the most. I've noticed the tumblers, they did a lot of stemware, it seems like, and not so many tumblers, you're right. Now this used to be all hard goods the last time I was here, but now it seems to all be art. This looks like pretty contemporary stuff. 
but Sandra and Ed, the viewer and her husband who we met, they found a pair of quail prints that were pretty good from the 70s for $7.99 a piece. Maybe this would sell in Florida, but it's $19.99. Tons of electronics. This Goodwill really is good as far as they get a lot of stuff. So your chances of getting something good here are, well, pretty good. And we did find some things. These are from the 80s and they are blue willow pattern and made of metal. I have had success selling these. They're about $2 each here, which is a good price, but this one's got a crack in the lid. And look, before blue geese, you have to have an egg that a blue ribbon goose comes out of. And there's another space shuttle. I guess it makes sense that since we're near the Air Force Academy, we'd be seeing space shuttle related items. And then they even have the patio opened up with stuff on it. So let's see if there's anything here for us base of some old cream separator. This is also a good place to do our research in quiet. But some of it seems to be worth pretty good money. My viewers Always a Zool pottery. It's really got a beautiful glaze and I had never heard of it. Is it something made around here? I don't know. But when Colorado. Colorado. Oh, that's one. Okay, so, so this is a regional. And I could probably sell that at the booth then. Oh yeah, I bet you could because somebody would recognize it and I think that's a really big substantial piece. If you're seeing $20 on mugs, are there any completeds? Let me look up Trey and then we'll the solds. Cool. Somebody, a muffin, a muffin tin. <laughs> or... Colorado. Okay, I get it. Interesting. This is cool. So a new regional brand to look for. Yeah, I better get that, right? Oh, I think so for $8. That seems like, a, let's see what the solds bring up, but I'll bet there's something. No oh, exact masses, wait, matches. Let me take off tray. Yeah. Okay, so they're selling like little pitchers for 20 bucks, a heavy mug for 25 the skull, that's always nice and a uh, salsa bowl oh yeah i think you can make money on this that's a nice so piece for the price to, like anything else it depends on depends on the piece but that's big and substantial and different everything else seems to be just mugs 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 so <laughs> i think i'll give it a try i would so purses and accessories now you can find some really great brands that are fairly recent and still make a lot of money on them if you know what you're looking for but I mainly look for older things. I'm looking for, obviously, older Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent and the big names would be great, but Enid Collins would be fun, a Caro Nan purse, but I don't see anything of that era here. Now this looks like it came from a church. It's not wildly old. Behold the Lamb of God. Very pretty though. Old vestments can be rather valuable. There's a piece of Talakipaki that casserole dish that's going to be older it may have lead in the glaze so not necessarily safe to cook in and it is $12.99 so I think I'm going to leave it. Royal China and other companies did these pie bakers in the late 70s early 80s that are cute and some people like to collect them the only problem is you start covering up the directions when you start to make the thing. We have a cart full of stuff. This goodwill is good and the Noritake perspective are for her because that's her pattern at home. I found a space needle plate. I found the one piece modernist picnic set and a piece of sterling. Oh yes, and the little Phoenix bird ginger jar. So it's so nice to be in a Goodwill where there actually are things to buy for resale. And for those of you who are Kentucky Derby glass collectors, well here's the 148th. So this is 2022's edition with their list of all the previous winners, which is getting smaller and smaller as the years go by. At least the print's getting smaller because they've got to get a whole lot more horses on there. Well, here we are in Colorado Springs and American Classics Marketplace is right there. It says it is Colorado's largest antique mall. I have not been here before. Hello, look I'm who there is. Back behind. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We are at the mall that Yvonne has a space in and I am with Sarah and David of the Traveling Button. And isn't this cool? I am so happy to be meeting everybody and I wish we had more time. So we're gonna whisk through here really fast. 
Okay, so this is the front part of the mall, and I think maybe this used to be a furniture store or something. It seems like that. I am honestly not sure. Since we have lived here the last eight years, it's been here, and it's always a lot of fun. There's just a ton of stuff here, and it takes a while to get through. I bet it does, and I won't even have much of a chance today, but uh, you're going to take me, ooh, wow, I could spend probably the whole afternoon just digging through this one. I know. This place <laughs> yes. has been here a long time, and it's uh, 30 off right now. Wow. Well, show me Yvonne's booth first because otherwise I'll get so distracted <laughs> I'll never get there and I really would like to see where she yes. sells. You folks don't have a, a space here, do you? We do not. We don't. Do you have any real world spaces at this point? Nope. Just online. Just my garage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's real world enough. Yeah. Exactly. This is Yvonne's booth. Yeah. Wow. Both of these? No, right here started the corner. Oh, the very good. Yes, okay. And she has another one over kind of catty corner from here, too. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, she's got the Hall Black Teapot. You don't see that in Black very often. Only $26, too. I think her uh, prices are going to be good. The entrance is pretty nice to this mall, isn't it? There's some nice premier booths. There are some really nice booths up front, but wow, this looks great. You've got some pretty good stuff. That's a nice price on that. That's a great price on that. Two of them. The other one's gone, too. Oh, you sold your silver crest. Yep. Fenton's popular again. I try to make little, you know, groupings. <laughs> It's nice to do groupings because it does make it easier for people. And ah, oh, look at that. A little bit of treasure craft. Including Everything Los Angeles, California. So true. And there it is. Ooh, look at these. Old Paris. These are two of the nicer pieces of Old Paris I've seen for a while because they've got such intricate design with the flowers coming off and the uh, the cobalt and gold is different. Usually they're floral patterns. And 160 for the pair. You know, there was a time when I first was in the business, this would have sold for like 500 for the pair. I think your price is right for today, but they're great. She's got some cool Hager. Oh my gosh. This giant bird. I mean, you don't see the black swan in that size. Beautiful. That is so cool. And I love the lion. Now, I mean, that's not a Hager, of course, but it the no, but it has like that look. And I love the dog because I, I just I just sold mine in the white and I've never seen the black lava. I kept lava. the cat that I bought with you up at Brass on Oh, neat. Um, we sold the snack plates of this. Oh, you just Recently. sold that? It's Hazel Atlas. Yeah, it's that turquoise floss or that. whatever they would call uh -huh. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. You just sold the uh, glasses? Yeah, the snack set and plates and the little... Um, I think they were like these. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see what this basket that you've got going on is because it looks really cool to me and I'm just curious about it. Here you go. Thank you. All right. So she has this marked as Venetian, which is a very safe way of saying it because it's probably Murano, but we don't know for sure. It could be just from Venice proper, but it's a really pretty bowl or basket and it is $36, which gosh what does it say on the bottom it's oh, okay. really hard to read See, it's I got a label yeah i just didn't you know i'm not gonna and i don't it recognize and yeah you don't know you're smart to call it what you know it is but i like it and i would like to have it okay thank you so this is the new booth that she yeah. is just starting to work on here and, and this is so that she can do some furniture know? pieces yeah. i just saw it just now that's great that's all it is. But this is where I sold all the good stuff right away, and so now I'm like, uh oh. Oh, that is good though. Aw, look at the fox. Isn't that cute? That's a wonderful fox print there with the baby. Is that price okay, George? Oh, yeah, I think so. I've sold some art too, immediately. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just so nice to be able to have a wall that you can use for something other than fixtures. A real rainbow. Yeah. A real rainbow. That's cute. Okay, I've got one. Afghans. So you I see, it's always can, I've sold some lamps. That's been going. Cool. So I'm really happy that I can t up sell things that are a little more expensive. So I'm yeah. Really well, excited. yeah, exactly. I mean, there I is sure. one nice thing about having a booth like this is that you have the option of buying some things that you wouldn't buy because you wouldn't want to ship otherwise. Yeah. And when you're thrifting a lot, you're going to find stuff like that. It happens to us all the time, and we leave stuff behind that's too big because I'm like, 
because what are you going to do right. with it exactly? Right. Yeah. And I'll put your name in. You can always change your mind. And I'm usually like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's, I want to bring it to life. <laughs> I, I just want to do it. Well, that's true. That's part of me too. It's like, oh, I'm bringing this back to life. It's going to find a new home. Yes. And then I see Cat on Nurse Flipper, and she'll ship like a piece of Ethan Allen furniture anywhere. And I think, you know what? Don't be a wimp. Just buy it. <laughs> Oh, that Fenton This is really cool. Off. I've gotten in that case before and bought Fenton. Oh, yes. But still, again, with what you pulled, I don't even know. Like, well, you know, I need some Fenton that isn't $300 and $400, too. This is kind of fun, this Stetson China pattern with the bamboo here. It's funny because they were made in the middle of Illinois, but they really like doing floral patterns. I have one at home, and it's called Rio, and it looks like bark cloth. And I love it, and I'm just like, this was made in the middle of Illinois. So much to see and so much to... Um, kind of take in about them all. That's really interesting that you've got three different levels here. They have showcase level, they have a warehouse level, and then they have their better spaces. Everything in this one is half off. I'm just looking to see if I see anything I need to own. Oh, really? Around the corner in this. Oh, this is a fun booth. Yeah. I like the color right away. Oh, that's okay. It just makes me want to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I see 20 fun things right off on the surface. Oh, yes, where it's uh, chasing its own tail. That's a cute one. I love, I love that pink set too. Yeah, that's cute. Mid-century. Yeah. Bingo. I see a lot of screen print, but I haven't seen this exact pattern before. I haven't either. What do you think it is? Oh, I suspect it's um, just uh, some of them, maybe Hazel Atlas or Anchor Hawking, um, yeah. but they just did so many. I mean, there's hundreds of patterns. I don't know how you could keep track of them all. Indeed. This one is marked Occupied Japan, which oh, is a little different, and it's twenty two ninety five. That's not a horrible price. I, I think I think I would I think I would buy these. The flamingo craze was really a little later in the 50s. The occupation ended in 1952, and the flamingo craze is more mid 50s. So these actually are something a little different to me, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and buy them, even though they're uh, 22.95 each. I feel like in Florida at a show I could probably get 45 a piece, and they're just different. You know what, sometimes it's just fun to look and learn even if it's not a resale priced booth. And I definitely think there's probably a lot of resale price stuff here if you dug because yeah, it's is. so big. We pick it a you lot. pick it a lot, yeah. yeah. That's kind of a neat bar cart with the drapery there. 179. Yvonne just sold hers. I've always liked the Bestwick and yes. the Beatrix Potter. It's probably, yeah, like you said, it's just sort of leftovers and they don't know what to do with it. And once in a while you'll find something. I'm curious about this because <laughs> it looks like it's a hotel plate. It's Maxim's. Let us go to Maxim's where the fun and frolic begins. And then it says it's the Canyon, which sounds like a hotel. So I'm a little confused by this piece, but it's 1250 with the discount. And it is definitely made as early restaurant wear. So this is, this might be from Maxim's in Paris. And if not, well, we'll find out what the Kenyan is. But I think this That's is interesting, nice. and I'm going to get it. That's a nice one. <laughs> what does it look like on? You well, should model it for us. <laughs> uh, it's a little too, a little too, too small. Nice. <laughs> <That's laughs> nice. Maybe without the liner yeah. for you. And you know what? There's fur coming off of it. So I'm gonna <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a pass. <laughs> yeah, I got the most amazing mid-century pink dining room chairs in here. Really? Yes. Do you ever show them in your uh, videos? No, but I should. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have They're to really see them. Cute. They sound really great. Nice little Shawnee piece here. Oh yeah, there's cute stuff. And of course, she's got the black light going. Oh, and a really nice uh, silhouette tray here for $35 with the Dutch scene <laughs> and the milkweed behind it. Interesting. So this is another space they're saying is a good place to pick. And this is a good thing for me because I'm not going to get to look through everything. So just showing a few highlights. This will tell me where to come back. Neat old radio for $40 there. Oh, I remember when we sold these new back in the day and they sold for more than this when they were new. This is Pilgrim Glass, the Europa line, and they would put this tassel on. So yes, that actually is from the factory. It's only $15 and that is something that cost $35 when it was new 30 years ago. So this might be something to be a bolo. I think cranberry glass will make a comeback soon because of all the gray and cool tone interiors people are doing. 
Pilgrim. I yep, this one is Pilgrim glass also. The sack base, oh, yeah. they <laughs> called these, and this one is 25. I think they were 45 new in 1990. This seems like a good one to pick. I also bought a set of this and sold it on really? uh, the Cult of Vintage Michael's channel. For really? Vintage. Yeah. Tell me um, more about this because I don't know this. It's Swedish. Uh huh. Pottery, and um, I bought a saucer and a teacup and a matching handled bowl. Oh, it's Zoner. Okay. I've heard yes. people talk of this. I haven't actually seen a piece before. If it didn't have the chip, I, I would the brand. like that uh, That's exactly as well. That's why I didn't pick it up yeah. because of the that chip. That was smart, but you did well with the other pieces and I'm not surprised it's all hand painted and it's got that Scandinavian whimsy. Yes. It reminded me of, I picked it up once too, it reminded me of Wim Vindlad, <laughs> yes, Bjorn Vindlad, that's what I was thinking too. Yvonne is leading us through to another place. This is very generous. Yes, she's saying talk and walk because we're having such a good time getting to know each other that we're doing more talking than walking. But we do want to show you some stuff. I see here's the extended showroom. So this is the less expensive end of the mall where you might be more inclined to find a bargain. There's deals out here. Straight, straight in front. Yep. Straight in front. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're yes, having a I've picked this numerous times glassware, thirty percent off over five. Wow, they must do some business because they even thought it was necessary to give you a chart of how much you're going to be paying. They are doing Dream Pets again, and they say Dream Pets on them, but they are going to say made in China, whereas the originals would say made in Hong Kong. Wow, this place is quite vast. This enamelware matches the bake oven or oven bake marked dinnerware that was made at this time, but these are actually made in Holland. So they're similar to the desco ware you see from Belgium or the Coben style you see from Denmark from Dansk. And if the condition is good, the fact that $75 is all they're asking for all these pieces would make that rather a good buy and probably a good buy for a reseller. And here in the orange, this one is Desco Ware from Belgium. Yeah, this is fun. And uh, yes, salvagey barn finds, but wow, this big barber chair. I just sold one just like this for 1200 bucks. And it was on my bucket list to have one one time as a dealer. And I can say now that I've sold one that it was so heavy and horrible to move that it's off my list. And this I one's 50% off everything. I mean, you can tell there's stuff to find in these booths. This is 50% off everything. This is probably my favorite booth in the whole place. Wow. She's Cat's Kitchy Vintage. She's a good girl. She does a lot um, up in those Denver a lot. And you, you know her from this business or from before? From thrifting. And then she told me that about her booth here. Cool. But she always has at least 30% off. But well, she always has really good stuff. Yeah, she does have good stuff. And these prices are really very good. Joy Perfume in the original box for $12.50. Oh, I love I see why they like this dealer. These little pottery banks that are knockoffs of Snoopy are only $4 each now. I have a feeling Misty will buy these when she sees them. I would be tempted to buy these, but I'm so curious to see whether Misty spots them when she comes. I'm going to leave them and not say anything, and we'll see if she notices them. The Rinconada Pegasus is an unusual form, and this is a larger size, 6 inches. These are very much something you would see in an Air Force town. I about the crackle. I if I was going to be in the monograms, I could get the silver fade with the G. I Look at that. I have to snag this. That is so cool. And I have fluffy squirrels that must be snagged as well. Yeah, those are great. So cute. Those are very and, good. Um, David, what was the other thing? Oh, look at Oh, wow. This is really my wheelhouse right here. <laughs> yeah. My mom so started picking these for me when I first became a dealer. Anything with fur on yes. it. And at first, the first time I saw them, I was like, what? And then they sold immediately. And I was like, oh, those are kind of cool. And now I notice them all the time. Those are fantastic. And they're 50% yeah. off. And half off is a great price. We'll take yeah. it. <laughs> Look there, Yvonne, another Teleflora smiley. So she is right on there. The cork lamp is sixty-two fifty on discount today. Oh my goodness, the yeah. poor guy. Yeah, he looks frightened too. He needs water. Poor guy. Yes. Yeah, he's him's dusty. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, this whole case is a little dusty. $1,500, but it says these are European animals, which in a way is good because you can get into trouble with taxidermy in this country, and it really depends also on the state you're in. There's federal laws as to what you can have, but there are certain states that don't allow certain things to be sold either. So when you're, if you're collecting this or buying it for resale, check your state laws where you sell before you go for it, because I have had items confiscated, and I've been in an antique mall where we had a huge fine we had to pay because one of the dealers brought in something that looked like a duck to us. Turned out it was some endangered waterfowl. When I worked in Centralia Square in Washington, we had the male and female version of this up in the attic where the furniture was. And every time we would come in, they would be in compromising positions. We never knew who did it. But somebody locally would come in every day just to tease us by having the Indian and his wife be a little frisky. Wow, this place clearly has a lot of really cool things. This is absolutely a place to pick and you can see three of our favorite local pickers here. I will definitely have to be back. Spode's Christmas tree, a whole bunch in the original boxes. Definitely if you can find this it's going to be a lot less expensive than buying new in the store, but that is one pattern they still make. Ted Johnson and it's a signed wood paint carving. Oh, that's um, fun. Look at the face. And they all have holes in the top. So I Googled this last time I was here and I almost picked it up. Um, and they go for over like 200 each. Wow. So this is a really good deal. And there's the sign. Fantastic. Wow. And the hole in the top is just because of the way they turn the wood. Correct. And these yep, were done in the 90s. So interesting because there's a lot of really good wood art from that period that people don't know. So the fact that we've got one that we know and has a label, people are asking, what do we pick up from the 80s and 90s? Ted Johnson, there you go, I something new. It. Some primitives in wow, here look fine. at these wonderful sleigh bells. That's one of the biggest sets I've seen. Those are amazing. Yeah, they're really neat. Well, wow, we had such a good time in Colorado Springs, and there's Sarah and David and Yvonne, and I had such a great time being here again. It was far too short. I can't wait to come back and see them all again. I promise I will. And there's just a ton of great stuff in Colorado Springs, so if you are on your way through, I highly recommend making a stop. In the meantime, this is George the Antique Nomad. Check me out on the social media and links in the description below. Also, subscribe to Yvonne Thrifty Rich and Sarah and David the traveling button a junk drunk mantiques thank you i always forget that and that's such a great name actually <laughs> so we will all be having fun and you can join us for that check out our channels and we'll see you all later Bye bye. bye guys. thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world please click the subscribe button below click the bell to be notified when new videos upload leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!